All right, everyone, uh, welcome to our signing day press conference. Uh, before I bring up Coach Mason, I uh, just want to let you know he'll, he'll come up and give an opening comment about uh, the class, uh, then open it up to any questions you may have. Um, I want to remind those that, that are on, um, on Zoom, just raise your hand and we'll get to you as soon as we can. So uh, to get it all started, I'd like to bring up the head coach, Derek Mason. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, thank you for joining us uh, here today for our uh, 2024 Blue Raider uh, football signing class uh, here in December. Extremely excited about this class. This class um, and features you know, 20, 23 young men who are, uh, we feel gifted, athletically talented, academically you know, capable of having success here uh, at MTSU. And as, as this um, group, or as we put together this group, feel strongly about what our coaches did. Uh, I've been here now uh, two weeks. <laughs> And if you talk about uh, what we had to do as a staff, you know, assemble a staff, um, hit the ground running, blitz uh, the mid-state area, canvas uh, the southeastern region to be able to put together this class, I feel really good about what this class uh, looks like. I think it's long. I think it's athletic. I think it's explosive. Uh, it touches offense, defense, special teams. Uh, from the quarterback position to, I mean, what we're looking for in, um, in defensive linemen to what we need to be on the back end. I think this class uh, really embodies uh, what we want to be moving forward. I mean, as you look at uh, our roster as it is right now intact, being able to come in with 23 guys uh, like today puts us much closer to where we want to be as we, you know, take our – uh, current roster and blend it with um, and some guys who are uh, extremely talented as well. Okay, I'm going to push this program forward. Now, you know, as I take a look at this class, I, I, I look at um, some things that we really wanted to focus on. We wanted to focus on speed, uh, height, length, athleticism, physicality. Physical toughness, physical tough and intelligent was what we talked about uh, as a staff, okay, in terms of identifiers, but we also wanted to make sure that we got dominant traits, okay, and those dominant traits transfer to the football field. So uh, I'm excited about this group. Again, okay, we have mid-state area of players. We have players from, uh, you know, the southeastern uh, United States. We've got players from in and around, you know, in our area, uh, an abundance of players from Georgia. I think man, we've been able to get some of the finest high school talent uh, you know, as you look at our roster, and then you couple that with being able to get some portal impact players as well as some um, physical, talented, uh, and long junior college players. This, this, is, this is the model for us. And this early signing period uh, showed that we can uh, push ourselves in the idea that in order to go places we've never been, we have to do things we've never done. So to sign a class of 23 today uh, means something. It's a first here. Uh, for a December class, and it won't be the last, but it is definitely my first class, the foundation for which uh, MTSU football is going to be measured as we move forward. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Coach, how did you go about when you came in uh, identifying, you know, the types of players from, I assume, an existing big board that, that the staff there on, on hand already had that, that you wanted to go for moving forward for this class? Yeah, I, I, I think you always look at your own roster first. We had to look at our roster and the portal uh, guys I mean, who had entered and figure out exactly, okay, where are our numbers? Because you could just go recruit guys just to recruit guys and your numbers get out of whack, you know, real fast. I thought we did a really good job being intelligent about looking at our roster, looking to manage our roster, saying, okay, for – for the schemes that we want to play and the things that we want to do, okay, how do guys on our current roster fit and where are our gaps, right? And I thought uh, in addressing that, we, we became pointed and very, very calculated about uh, where we wanted to go, who we wanted to recruit, old, young, portal, and this, this, this December signing group really reflects, uh, 
you know, where our needs are. And we're not done yet, but it really reflects where we needed to go and what we needed to address. Coach, uh, I know obviously this class has been worked over for quite some time by the previous staff, the current staff. Since you've been here for the last two weeks, uh, how many would you say have come to board in recruiting since, since that two week period? You know what, to be honest, I think we had three commits. So I'd say 20, 20, 20 of those guys were guys that we targeted. Again, because schemes are different, okay? I mean, a little bit. Um, you know, what we want to be may be a little different than what we've been offensively. Um, just wanting to have balance and run and pass and what we do. We want to push the ball down the field. But as, if I can get into specifics just a little bit, we have, we have one of the best returning quarterbacks, in my mind, okay, been in, in Conference USA. And what we were able to do was add um, competition, athleticism, and really at, uh, just, just, just the football acrimen uh, piece as everybody's getting ready to go through something new in that room. Your quarterback room's got to be as good as any room like today because you, gotta, you, you never know what happens throughout a season. So I think we upgraded that room. Uh, in terms of like the depth and the level of competition. So when you have something that's great, okay, man, and you add to it, man, you feel like like your team gets better because that position is so important, right? So that's just one example of just uh, letting people know when you look at the size, the athleticism uh, that goes on. We understand that we've got one of the best here, but we wanted to add to that room to make sure that we can like be great. And I think as we move through um, talking about these guys, that's what you'll see throughout. Coach, in today's world of college football, how do you determine if you want to go get a high school guy out of position or maybe go get a more experienced guy out of the portal for that same position? Um, it's really a combination of how you manage your roster. So that's why I said from the beginning, as you talked about uh, the idea of, you know, how do you decide junior college, uh, portal, um, high school. Mm -hmm. To me, we're never going to dip below the standard, right? So the standard is the standard. But what you want to look at, too, is you don't want to log jam at the top with uh, veteran players, and all you're doing is adding portal guys to um, a group man, that has maybe you know four, four, three or four guys there. There's a log jam at that position, and now everybody gets disgruntled. We wanted to make sure that we, we could provide solid depth okay, to make sure we can compete. And, and so when you looked at, you know, the high school talent, we, we are a developmental program. So you always want to take top high school talent. What we did with junior college and portal guys is address needs either via the, port, I mean, via the portal, okay, and exits that we have from our program, and or I mean, guys that we felt we needed a little more maturity at the position. We know we lost two offensive tackles, right? So, man, we're still, okay, in that vein of making sure, man, that we like, hit our mark, okay, with older guys, but understanding that we need young depth in terms of developmental players to make sure we can get from where we are to where we want to go. Uh, on Zoom, we have a question from uh, Chip Walters. Hey, Derek. Um, give me a little football one-on-one -on -one these days. We you sign 23 today, what are you allowed to do numbers-wise when it comes to February? Yeah, um, good question, Chip. And by the way, happy holidays as we move that, as we move in that direction. Um, you know, we, we, look, we looked at uh, our signees and we said, okay, after we got through the roster management piece and started to look at how many we could sign, we felt like it was extremely important to, again, not dip below the standard and not find ourselves being poached on the back end of recruiting because that's really what happens. So, man, as we looked at it, um, I, I don't, I don't want to give you the definitive number, but I'm going to say the ishes, right? So we signed 20-ish or 20-something like players today. Um, our, our, our roster cap is obviously 85 scholarship um, and players. We have... Um, right around 10-ish or so availability spots for February, which makes it a lot easier to target, okay, the guys that we need to go after and, and really build relationships from when we start January 1st, okay, to, to really that last recruiting weekend, you know, as you 
bump into February and go towards the signing day. So like to me, having 10-ish spots and being able to identify exactly who those guys are, how we build those relationships, and that's classified from portal to junior college to high school. Um, so we'll be looking at some early visits in January to address some needs, but that's not a lot of players. And I think that's the great place or great spot that we're in right now because, again, we don't want to get poached on, on the back end of recruiting and find ourselves dipping below the line to take somebody man, who doesn't fit what we do or really can't play at this level. Chris here, I'm sorry. I think we got a good bit down the road. I think there, there's some young men that we're evaluating uh, or have evaluated and started relationships with, you know, now um, that, well, the relationships were started as we were, you know, building this class. And now what we have to do is, is finish those relationship pieces because as we're talking about older players or maybe even some junior college players, uh, like in that realm, we, we want to do our homework and understand that they fit who we are. It's important that players have to fit, okay? It can't just be taking guys, and we wanna make sure we do our homework too. Is there, is, there, is there enough there? When you take older players, you wanna know culturally do they fit? Um, what's been the injury history? I can tell you, I thought we did a terrific job bringing this group in and going through a thorough, I mean a thorough medical evaluation to see like what are we working with? Um, it, it's, it's looked a little different, I thought our, our our measurement pieces and really um, our athletic training uh, evaluations gave us good insight and information and we were spot on in terms of not having any um, discord in terms of what we were looking for. So I'm excited that we're hitting the mark. We understand exactly where we want to go. We've got few spots to get and uh, the targeting is, is really dead on in terms of what we what we see ourselves getting towards and what we need to be as we close on the back end and we start to push towards February. Okay, we have another question on Zoom uh, from Chris Harris. Hey, Coach. How's it going? How you doing, Chris? Happy holiday. I'm great, man. I'm great. Good to see you. So you got uh, five years, 23, uh, from Middle Tennessee area mm -hmm. here. I talked to two of them at the today, in fact. Why right. was it important that you were this class well, that's us. That's our DNA. Um, that's where our bread is buttered. That's where we live. That's where uh, man, people in this area, I mean, they want to be able to see and evaluate and watch and follow and, you know, continue to invest in, in, in some of their own, right? So um, from a standpoint of getting Middle Tennessee uh, players that we – I said that in my press conference. I meant that. That wasn't like lip service. And we're still not done, right? I, I, I still consider, you know, transfer players and what we did with Gamarian, uh, you know, man, coming here. Hey, man, he's been in Tennessee and, 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 and uh, played at Vanderbilt, you know, over the last couple of seasons. So, I mean, for me, looking at Brendan Harris, you know, he came to Vanderbilt and played, you know, in a couple of seasons. And I know – those young men well. I think they're athletically gifted, but I think they're also they have, they understand what I want culture wise. So you can say five, but really it's 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 more than that because I think these student athletes have acclimated to Middle Tennessee, so they know it. Um, they they came here because they feel like it does feel like home to them. So with that being said, I think it's a win win. It's a win for MTSU. It's a win for the student athlete because it's a familiar environment. But it's a huge win for our fan base and those men who want to who wanna see us be us. So let's do it. You, you were out in the local community very recently with, with the big recruiting weekend uh, th this past weekend. How big was that for getting this class together and getting everybody you know, on campus and, and evaluating them as, as far as, as getting this class put together? I just want to do um, get out and, and let our coaches be seen. Have our program be seen. Um, here's the thing. I, I, 
football is such a, uh, like any other profession, it's a relationship, you know, centered, you know, opportunity. And I think us seeing coaches, them seeing us, can we take every young man in the Mid-State area? No, we can't. Can we stop by and see coaches and, you know, spend time with, with, with those coaches, like talking about their players? And you know what? Maybe it's not taking a player. Maybe it's helping a player or identif identifying a player and calling another coach and, and, and trying to help a coach uh, get a student athlete placed. You know, energy begets energy, you know, and relationships uh, invested in create other relationships. So that's important. We, we have to be who we say we are. We're blue collar, top to bottom. So if we're blue collar, let's be about the blue collar work, man. Let's let's farm our own land, okay, man. Let's let's see our people. Let's see, let's let our people see us. Let's go down to the farmers market, okay, man, and help our our, our local uh, coaches who are you know our vendors and growers of our uh, our our local talent, you know, place and and place athletes and and uh, continue to help them as they as they continue to help us. I think that's fair. People like to grade recruiting classes. If you were a teacher, with all things considered, you know, two weeks to a job, all that, what grade would you give this recruiting class, this class? You know what? I'll leave that to the to the people that grade classes. Like for me, I know we went out and got uh, a dynamic, um, long, smart, high football IQ, uh, physical class that I think is going to you know, bear its soul here over the next couple of years. I, I don't, I don't want to make predictions about, uh, you know, seasons or where we're going to go. Now, okay, I mean, after, you know, I mean, getting this guy, this, this group of guys together, it's got to be about the work. Okay, they're bricks, we're bricks. Um, and the best way for us to build a, a winning program is to make sure that the work gets done because that's the mortar. Okay, the deeper the work, the harder the work, the better the work. Uh, I and mean, the more solid the foundation and the binds that really give us a chance to build. So I'll let everybody else like look at it and judge it. But what I feel uh, has transpired today is something that we'll look back on like a couple of years from now and say, man, that, that, that was exactly what we needed and exactly what this program set out to do as, as Coach Mason started his tenure here at MTSU. Any other questions for Coach Mason? Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy New Year.